In this video, we're going to talk about cyclonic flow and anticyclonic flow. So when we talk about cyclonic flow, we're really talking about an area of low pressure. An area of low pressure means that we have air that is converging at the surface and then rising aloft and then diverging aloft higher up in the atmosphere. Now when we talk about anticyclonic flow, that's high pressure and that's when the air is sinking. We have convergence of air aloft and then divergence of air at the surface. And so whenever we look at high pressure, that's the atmosphere that is pushing air down. It is increasing the pressure at the surface. So think of a scale. If you were to just take a scale and put it on the floor and put nothing on it, it would read zero. But as soon as you put your weight on the scale, the meter goes up. So it's the same idea when we measure atmospheric pressure, especially at the surface. Here, pressure is sinking or it's being pushed down onto the earth. That is what creates high pressure. And it's the opposite effect with low pressure. When we have low pressure, that's because air is converging at the surface and then rising aloft. So air is not being pushed down, it's actually doing the opposite. It's rising upwards. So that's the differences between cyclonic air and anticyclonic air. So when we look at a 3D image here, a low pressure system in the northern hemisphere spins counterclockwise and a high pressure system in the northern hemisphere spins clockwise. And both of these systems in the southern hemisphere have the opposite direction. But for right now, I'm just going to concentrate on the northern hemisphere. So with our low pressure system here, our winds converge into the center of this low pressure system and then collide and therefore are forced to rise and then they diverge aloft. And so that's why you see clouds that basically billow out. It's that air diverging aloft. Now, during a high pressure system, you have air that is converging aloft and then diverging or spreading out at the surface as air sinks. So if you've ever had a ceiling fan in your home before, you know that a ceiling fan usually has two settings. Setting one would rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise, and then setting two would go the opposite way. And so what would happen is that if you put it on the setting that causes the air to rise, you wouldn't be feeling the effects of the fan because it is actually rotating in a way that it's causing air to rise. It's rotating counterclockwise. But if you had the fan rotate clockwise and you laid underneath the fan, well, you actually felt the effect of the wind from the fan. And that's because it is taking air from the ceiling and is pushing it down. And so that's why if you've ever gone to a church with a very large ceiling or very high ceiling, you notice that they have those fans. And so those fans aren't there to keep uh, people cool. They're there to help bring the heat down from the ceiling to help churches save on heat costs. So when we talk about converging air and diverging air, and we actually look at it in a vertical aspect, here you can see that if the jet stream winds are highlighted in these blue arrows, that means that when the winds are converging aloft, they're diverging at the surface, creating high pressure areas at the surface. And then when they're diverging aloft, that's because they're converging at the surface. So that creates an area of relatively low pressure. 